Actually, they went there for the shooting. And they went the next day to continue. So the flowers were gone. And guess what happened? The buffaloes had eaten them. Sure. That's it. That's it. I find that whenever I need to be energized or re-inspired, I go back to his films along with other great directors like Rossellini and, and Visconti and others. But, but uh, what was special to me about Ray was that um, I come from a um, working class family that was not educated. So there were no books in my house. And uh, I think there was no other way for me to be introduced to uh, Indian culture. Uh, the Indian people, uh, aside from watching his films, we had we saw many films and we had television, and so uh, if it was if it wasn't for seeing uh, Sajid Ray's films, uh, I, I don't think I would have had any idea the opening up of such an extraordinary culture and uh, such a great civilization, um, and so uh, I became a fanatic of watching his films. I would find anywhere they were playing. In fact, the first Ray film I saw, I saw it on television in New York on a Sunday night. Uh, cut up with commercials in it and uh, dubbed in English, uh, Pati Panchali. So that was that was the first one, and I was amazed because I think I, you see, this was this was a, a film where um, I come from. I'm Sicilian American, and we have our own little village in a way we lived in. So you can't imagine anything more different than than uh, uh, you know. And yet, and yet we identified immediately as human beings, as people, as family. And this was amazing, and that, uh, the, the Opu trilogy, all three films, you know. And then I just sought out his films. The other thing I, I was fascinated by was the music. Yes. And I sought the music out, and I found one album by Ravi Shankar, uh, which was called Improvisation, who composed the music for that film. I found one album uptown on 49th Street. So and I was, <laughs> you've seen the music room. The yes, film. well, the music room for me is my favorite. I love, uh, I'm a great admirer of all his films, but uh, I like Devi. Uh, the Upward Trilogy, Distant Thunder, uh, The Chess Players, uh, Charyolata, I may not be pronouncing it properly, excuse me, but, uh, but the music room for me, I studied uh, over the years. I'm now, finally, I think seven years ago, they made a beautiful restoration, and I screened it at least three times already uh, uh, in the past two years. Now, when he started his film career, you know, he was an avid student of films. Mm -hmm. and this uh, film society movement also he started, and later on he developed this theory that he never believed that there, there was a separate parallel cinema as vis-a-vis -vis commercial cinema. Uh -huh. So how do you look at it? You mean he thought it was together? Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, I, I, I think, um, I think, uh, I, I found that, of course, being a film director in America in the 70s, we found that to be very true. We found a European influence, Asian influence, Indian influence in the films of Coppola, and, uh, uh, Terry Malick, and all the great directors of the 70s. Um, uh, many of us, uh, Spielberg, uh, mainly from uh, Spielberg also, from European film. And um, we incorporated into something very uh, American, I think. Uh, but then things changed in the 80s. And this is why I found it, I, I, this is why I'm here, I mean, uh, in one respect, to, uh, to draw attention to. Uh, uh, the proper presentation of foreign films in America, particularly because of the cultural boundaries. Right. There would be no boundary then. Yeah. You see, and you get to know language the people. Yeah, language of film. I think it's fantastic. And so I, I'm very, very uh, concerned, particularly of films uh, from India that will be shown in America in their proper form. Here we are at the Freer Gallery of Arts, which is an institution, and this is the first time ever, anywhere, that the complete Sathajit Rai's work is being screened. Oh, it's 35 films, Amazing. newly restored, yeah. classics, mm -hmm. subtitled, mm -hmm. so it's a major undertaking, mm -hmm. and we are honored that you can be here with us. Mm -hmm. um, in planning this, I had like a three-pronged endeavor. Mm -hmm. There are people like you and me, no matter mm -hmm. what color, no matter what mm -hmm. background, that mm -hmm. are cinephiles and uh, have enjoyed and are looking forward to seeing these films. Then there is the mainstream cinema-going audience, which we hope mm -hmm. to attract. But more than anything else, I'm hoping, and we call it a luminous legacy. Can we pass this on to the next generation? That's the most important thing. No matter yeah. what the background. That's Universally, right. Universally, the next generation. How is that possible? How can we make that happen? Well, I think the first thing we have to do is, as much as possible, I don't know, I don't know where or how to do it, but to raise the money to make sure that the elements of these films are preserved and that they're shown in venues like this and in venues in New York and all the major cities of, uh, I, I think, in terms of America first and, of course, Europe. But I think, I think more America now because 
I think uh, younger people need to be exposed to other cultures in America. And a film, uh, cinema is such a, an accessible way, yes. you know. Most influential. Yes, exactly. And uh, particularly films in the 40 years old, 30 years old or whatever. Uh, but uh, it would be wonderful if different uh, venues across America, uh, uh, repertory theaters, there aren't that many left in America, but repertory theaters in main cities in America and Canada could see this program. That would be ideal. But do you think his films are accessible to any age, any background, or do you think we need to bring awareness by more educational uh, lectures and panels, I, discussions? I, I think, I think uh, any... Any introduction always helps. I think that's important, especially the younger the person or uh, maybe in the case of my case, I was, uh, as I say, my family is uh, garment workers. They work in the garment district. They had no education. They never read. There were no books in the house. But on the television comes this film. They were watching it with me. They, they followed it. They, they believed in the characters. They fell for the characters. They understood. Um, and I think they were more, I was very surprised if, if um, at that group uh, from where I came from could be open to uh, uh, Films from different cultures. Uh, it was a very interesting time, and I think it can happen again. There's no doubt. I think Asian cinema, to a certain extent, there's many, many young people in America. I, again, I'm speaking only for America, but there are many young people in America who are, who are uh, absorbing these Asian films, Asian films, and that is uh, from China, that's from uh, Hong Kong, Beijing, and Taiwan. Three different styles almost. So, in India, there's so many different styles too. And I think you could see uh, Baz Luhrmann's Moulin Rouge, for example, is, is Bollywood. I, I was watching I said, wait a minute, I said, this looks familiar. <laughs> and he, I met him and he told me, I said, oh, it's wonderful. I said, sure, it's a very interesting thing. Are we breaking those boundaries between Bollywood, Hollywood, European cinema? I, yeah, I think there's no York. doubt. Yeah, I think there's no doubt. I mean, there's still the struggle of, and it's more than ever now, the Hollywood film, the blockbuster, a lot of money. The more money you spend, the more you are obliged to make at the box office. So. It limits a certain kind of film you can make, but, but there's no doubt that there's the cinema now, and even with digital video, young people, which is a different medium, but maybe the medium of the future, particularly for young people who, who can't afford camera. I never, I never had a camera in my house, so I, you know, I would draw pictures in order to make a film. I didn't really know. When I went to New York University, I was able to get my hands on a camera for the first time. But there's no doubt that, uh, that it, it seems to be the uh, medium which breaks down all barriers and goes across all cultures. Obviously, it's a great day for the embassy that we could have the Ray Festival in its entirety in Washington, in the capital of the United States. Uh, it's, it's a great window to India, and to have uh, the works of one of the greatest directors of all time. Do you, do you think there is a special message that we, or these films, can give to where the world is or to the next generation? Yes, certainly. I mean, there's, there's a general message which uh, India has to convey, which is the message of peace and harmony. And uh, what, is, uh, what is a better message in these troubled times? Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you.